Hello everybody and welcome to another light novel review. In this video I'm going to be talking about volume number one of Date Alive. This one written by Kushi Tachibana with illustrations by Tsunako. If you want to pick up your own copy of this one I'll have links in the description down below. Date Alive takes place in a world, well Earth honestly, uh, however the difference between that Earth and ours is that that Earth has spent the last 30 years being rocked by natural disasters called space quakes. The very first one of these happened in Eurasia and killed well over a million people. Needless to say, humanity said to be on its toes and so there are major shelters and everything else in place for people to evacuate to in case a space quake occurs. Now when our book opens, our main character Shido, who is a average Japanese high school student, as it's often the case in light novels, is uh, evacuating to his school's shelter because there is a space quake happening. He decides, because he's a good older brother, to check on the location of his younger sister and discovers that her GPS is showing her in front of the restaurant that they had agreed to meet for for lunch. Well, after cursing her for being stupid, he of course does the right thing as a big brother and dashes off to save her. He ends up finding himself at the epicenter of the space quake and comes face to face with a strange and very powerful girl who also happens to be wielding an enormous sword. Well, in the ensuing fray between of defense forces and this girl, Shido is rescued by a organization that reveals the girl is in fact what is referred to as a spirit and is the cause of space quakes. Well, spirits are the cause of space quakes and that the defense forces have created a series of weapons and such to try and deal with these spirits, but so far, all they managed to do is drive spirits away. They never seem to actually defeat them or stop them from appearing. And so this organization that has rescued Shido says to him, they've come up with a new plan. Since these are girls, they're going to appeal to them in a different way. They want to find something that these girls can fall in love with. Because if they fall in love with something from our world, Perhaps they'll stop destroying it. And funny thing, they think Shido is just the thing that these girls could fall in love with. Now, Data Live came out in 2011. It actually finished the main story's run in 2020, and there's 22 volumes in the main series. Now, that doesn't even begin to touch the fact that there were several volumes of short stories. There is a spin-off series called Data Bullet. There's three seasons of anime that covered the first 12 volumes with the fourth season on the way later this year, as well as an anime adaptation of Date a Bullet, the spin-off series. And again, there's more. There's a manga, which I don't think has been licensed at all. Uh, there's also uh, numerous video games. Uh, so Date Alive is kind of a big thing. And I will be dead honest, I've only read this first book. I say that out of the gate because regardless of what I say in this review, I know that there are a bunch of you who have probably read fan translations or watched the anime and so forth, so you know way more about this series and what happens in the future. So I'm just basing my opinions on this first volume. If things change, you can feel free to just kind of mention that, but try to avoid spoilers for people who haven't read on in the series. It's also worth noting that this book came out in around the same couple of years as High School DxD, Infinite Stratos, and a whack ton of other probable manga and anime that I can't think of off the top of my head. The reason I mention that is because this kind of follows that pattern of nice guy who isn't super powerful finds himself in a situation where he is surrounded by super powerful women who love him and if, uh, you know, they don't get their stuff together, the world's probably going to end. Yeah. Uh, so you probably know <laughs> what to expect. It's obviously a harem. A lot of the comedy is going to be harem-esque pratfalls as well as, 
the main character finding himself in uncomfortable situations between the jealousy and everything else. Like I said, you kind of have a feel for what this series is about. Now, Data Live, I will say, has a couple of positive points in my view that maybe put it slightly ahead of other similar harem-esque comedy adventure action supernatural powers type series that the only thing that i will say about this series that slightly bothers me well okay it's not just slightly bothers me i i, I just i'm not a big fan of it is the fact that unlike a lot of harems where we just have girls falling in love with the main character this series is telling us that the main character is intentionally trying to make them fall in love with her and fall in love with him it is an intentional harem a harem that he is being encouraged to create which feels kind of manipulative and kind of skeevy to me. Uh, admittedly, the book does go a long way to show that ultimately what appeals most to these girls is when Shido is just being himself and not being coached or fed lines or whatever. It is when he decides to just throw that all to the wind and just be himself and appeal to these girls in his own way that they actually do start developing feelings for him. So I will at least give it that, but as I said, the, the setup, I'm a little, I just don't think it's really my bag. I'm just not a big harem guy. I've kind of moved on from that thing. But as I said, there are a couple things that this book I think does quite well. First of all, the setup, the whole thing with the spirits, the mystery about where they come from. Why do they come to our world? What happens when they leave our world? Why do they just kind of keep coming back? All of that kind of stuff is honestly a lot stronger hook than I would say I've seen in other books. Uh, a lot of these books, it seems, often will fall into sort of a monster of the week. And yes, Data Live will probably fall into a spirit of the week, but there is still a much bigger mystery kind of overarching this whole story. So I kind of feel like that makes it feel a little bit more cohesive and like it's holding this longer narrative together a little bit better. I'll also give it some points because for once we have a super nice and empathetic main character and the book tells us why. The book gives him a backstory that actually explains why in the face of horror and terror and this girl who could obliterate the world, he actually feels bad for her. I did appreciate that because so often in these books, characters are so vanilla and just a nice guy because that's the archetype. It was at least nice to see a book take one step forward in saying, this is the reason. I also appreciated that even though the main characters themselves are mainly archetypal and you'll kind of have a really good feel for who they are and how they work in the story because of that, the secondary and tertiary characters are much more interesting and quite quirky and I found that there were a lot of times that I had more fun when the book would shift for a little while to those characters as opposed to focusing just on Shido, Toka and Origami. And on top of all of that, the fact that Tachibana himself knows that this is a spoof and that the story itself is originating from an idea that even in the afterward, Tachibana says, was really a silly idea, an idea that playing a dating sim would be somehow a life and death, world shattering kind of thing where he had this vision of people on a battleship trying to make choices to keep the girl from getting angry at them and if she got angry all the sirens blared and everything went crazy and everybody's like oh we're screwed and i appreciated that even tachibana started off with his book knowing this is a goofy idea but that they did manage to create a story that was fairly cohesive and kind of held together and as i said had a couple of good hooks on the way so overall data live it is predictable given the genre that it is. It does have a lot of the humor and stuff that you're going to expect. 
Admittedly low on fan service in this volume, which I guess I should have said was another plus that I would give to it. Uh, it also has some fun and quirky secondary characters that help kind of round things out and make the book a little bit more fun. However, again, a little predictable and I'm still kind of not really a huge fan of this. Let's have a series where we actually manufacture a harem as opposed to it just happening. I, although on the flip side, I guess maybe that makes it somewhat more believable than every single girl who just meets this dude falls in love with him. I don't know. Uh, in any case, as I said, the series might completely change pace with that. I have no idea because I can only base it on what this first book has told me and on what kind of the premise is for the series going forward. But hey, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments about this series uh, down below because like I said, I know from a fact that a lot of you are fans of this series and know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. But again, please keep it spoiler free. In this video, I want to say a special thanks to Caceres, Jean-Luc Chartier, Kyle Block, New Villaric, and Mika Christensen for their support on Patreon, as well as the support of all of my patrons who helped to keep the channel running, helped me sort of expand into new ideas and try new things, as well as supporting other projects like the EnglishLightNovels.com and the Light Novel Podcast. So for my next review, I am uh, gonna leave Japan and uh, I'm going to Korea. And just by the fact that I mentioned that it's Korean, you probably already know what it's all about. It's gonna be volume number one of solo leveling. I, I mean, I'm not a huge, I'm not very knowledgeable about Korean books, but certainly this seems to be a book that has made a huge splash internationally. Uh, it's got a manga, a webtoon, a whole bunch of stuff based on this one. So uh, that's going to be my next review. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. Don't forget to give me a like and thumbs up and all that crap that all us YouTubers say to you. I appreciate you checking this review out and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Till then, bye bye for now.